Today, I thought it would be fun to compare modern snowboarding gear to this vintage set of winter ski wear. If you've been watching the last few of my Craftist videos, then you'll know that for the last few weeks, I have been working on hand knitting this entire set from my ski bonnet to my mittens, to my socks, all the way to this vintage ski sweater of which I own the original and I made this copy. <laughs> To test this out, I'm not going to take this down the slopes because I'm not wearing a helmet, so I will be trying cross-country skiing. I have never cross-country skied before, so that should be a very interesting adventure that we can take together. But before we dive into all of that, why don't I take you back a few days ago to when I finished off this sweater with the sleeves, because I know that a few of you had questions on how I changed my knit flat sleeves to be knit in the round. So let's go to that right now. Okay, so a brief explanation of how you can knit sleeves that were originally meant to be knit flat in the round. I'm just talking about this particular example, which you don't have any color work on the arm of the sleeve, and it is knit from the bottom up. So basically when it tells you to cast on a certain number of stitches, you do the same thing, and then rather than knitting back and forth, you start knitting in the round, and you do all the increases as are explained in the pattern. You just kind of pick the seam line, I did where I had the original start of the cast on that made it my start of the round and I kind of marked where my increases were. And then I knit it all the way up and this is the kind of important part which is where you're going to switch from knitting in the round back to knitting flat. And that is if you're reading your pattern and it says cast off some number of stitches. Usually I've seen somewhere between like four and eight stitches on the next two rounds cast off blank number of stitches at the beginning of the next two rounds and this is where you switch from knitting in the round to knitting flat to shape that sleeve head or the sleeve cap. So I am right at that point. Of course I'm not following a pattern. I am copying a sweater but that's what my pattern would say at this moment. At the beginning of the next round I'm going to start casting off some stitches. I will knit all the way around my sleeve until I come back to the start and instead of trying to bridge over the cast off spot, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to start purling back, beginning with casting off stitches. And then you just follow the rest of the pattern exactly as written and you knit it flat. Let me show you that. All right, so I've knit that first round. So I cast off my number of stitches right there. I've knit all the way around. I'm back to the beginning. In the past, I would have just continued knitting in the round, but now I have these cast off stitches. So instead, I'm going to start purling back here, beginning with that other cast off. One thing to note is that many people have different tension when they knit in the round versus when they knit flat. Their purling tension is different from their knitting tension. And in the original vintage, there was also some differences that you could see, and I think that's fine. I'm not gonna make any changes to my needles or anything in order to combat my different tensions. I'm just trying to be a little aware of it. My purling tension is a little looser than my knitting tension, so I'll try to keep that in mind. Some people, in order to help with that, if they have interchangeable needles, they will put a different needle, like a smaller or larger needle size, depending on how different your purling tension is, on the side with which they will purl to help make that a little bit more even. What we're gonna do now, and I'll just show you how that transition goes, I'll do my cast off stitches. I'm just going to continue knitting back and forth. I personally would recommend using a circular needle because while you are knitting flat, because everything else before it is in the round, you are going to have a curved bit of work so that you're trying to work back and forth, or flat, so working it back and forth. So the circular needles are very helpful. Also, <laughs> do you like my new hair decoration? <laughs> I was switching from double pointed needles to this circular needle and I didn't want to lose them. Store my needles in my hair quite often. So this is a nice hair accessory look. Anyway, let me finish this sleeve and put it on my sweater and you all can go back to the future where I am enjoying wearing this entire ensemble. I'll see you there. So hopefully that was a little bit helpful on how I did that exactly and how maybe you can modify some knit flat sleeves to be knit in the round. Now I think it's time to get cross country skiing. Now I really wanna put this vintage ski gear to the test and while I have these lovely vintage cross country skis and they still work with working bindings and everything, 
really fun, <laughs> but I don't want to put them through all the paces. I'd rather enjoy them and look at them. I think I'm going to grab some modern cross country ski gear and really try out this knit vintage set. This is really fun. I am enjoying this so much, but oh my gosh, do I feel unsteady on these skis. I did ski when I was very, very young, but two decades since I've been on any kinds of skis. So I've been taking my fair share of tumbles. Before I go through how I feel about my outfit, why don't I tell you exactly all the layers that I'm wearing so you know how much I've got on in 26 degree Fahrenheit or minus three degrees Celsius. As a base layer under my ski pants and my ski sweater, I am wearing a thermal underwear layer, cozy and should help keep me warm under all the other layers. Like the vintage ski sweater, which you've seen me working on, I absolutely love how it fits and I am actually also wearing a pair of vintage ski pants. I did make ski pants for myself last year, but they don't fit anymore, so I acquired these vintage pairs instead. Now it's time for some of the knitted accessories that I designed to go with this like these socks. They're quite wide at the top with some color work to match my sweater with a contrast heel and toe. They are thicker than any other socks I have ever knit before but honestly I'm pretty glad for that because they do keep me nice and warm. Next is my ski bonnet. It's super cute and I'm really happy with how the color work turned out on this one. Sometimes I have a little bit of a hard time figuring out where exactly to wear it on my head, but I just tend to reference the original pattern photo and tie it under my chin. I decided to tie it to one side to keep the bow ties out of my mouth a little bit more from the last times I was wearing it. And last but definitely not least are my beautiful Selbu mittens. They have, again, the same kind of Selbu rose or that star or snowflake pattern on the top. And I designed them to try and match with the rest of the ensemble as well. They're very, very warm and comfortable. And I did manage to fix the issue where I accidentally knit two left-hand gloves. So now I have a left and a right-hand glove that I can wear outside and hopefully stay nice and cozy and warm when I'm cross-country skiing. In terms of how this ski gear is performing, so first things first, bonnet, very similar to last year. It is so nice and warm over my ears. It's not pressing on anything. My face is a little cold. It's a little numb. I think if I were out here wearing just whatever, I'd probably have a scarf covering from here down, you know, and I would probably have my hat pulled down to cover my forehead because it's cold. It's 26 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's minus three or so Celsius. So I'm a little, it's a little cold on my face. I was most worried about my fingers and my mittens because with knit wear, you sometimes get a lot of breezes coming through the mittens, but I think the color work is really what's saving my fingers. I do feel like there's some cold coming through, but keeping my fingers moving, and even though there's a slight breeze going, it's not like blasting through the holes in the knitting because of the stranded color work. I think maybe I would prefer a thrummed pair of mittens and also, it's so cold that my mouth is getting all done. So it's a little hard for me to speak, but hopefully you can understand me okay. Or the other thing would be that you wear like a very thin pair of gloves or something under the mittens. It's kind of the nice thing about this entire outfit is it's slightly oversized so I can layer a lot of things underneath. So I would not need a jacket or anything. This. This sweater is more than enough uh, for me to wear, especially if I'm gonna be doing something more active like cross country skiing, I will definitely warm up. The socks are great. I was worried that they were way oversized, but like someone mentioned in my comments, it's so nice to have the tops be so big so I could put my pants in them. The vintage pants are awesome. They're so comfortable, so roomy, so easy to move in. Okay, I'm gonna go ski a little bit more and enjoy myself cross-country skiing in this outfit during the sunrise. It's so beautiful out here. Thank you. 
Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm so sorry that this particular episode of Craftmas has been quite late. I was having a wonderful time celebrating Christmas with my family. If that's something that you celebrate, I hope you had a lovely time too. And if not, then I hope that you're enjoying this cozy time of winter and have a very wonderful end of the year and a very happy new year if I don't see you before then. This has been such an adventure and so rewarding to finally be able to wear it and use it outside. So I'll see you all later. Bye.